Hello and welcome everyone. I am Max Power and this is StarCraft II Heart of the Swarm replay. Between Nulidico down here in the bottom and up here in the top we have Crystal Powers or Chris Powers. He normally goes by Crystal Powers. Um, and this is Derelict Watcher Tournament Edition. The brand new map added to the map pool. Let's uh, bring up the name. Boom. Uh, yeah, both of these players, I know them personally. Uh, they're not good players. <laughs> they're about, I'd say, gold league on their good days. Uh, and this is not one of their good days. Um, they are actually off racing, both of them. Uh, so we're going to see some very interesting, different play, I suppose. Uh, <laughs> down to, uh, to these differences. So, PVT normally... Uh, as we all know, it's a very interesting matchup. I think it's... I'd actually call it one of the, the most... I think it's the most unique matchup in the game. Um, it has some very interesting ways that it, it plays, and a lot, of, a lot of differences have not been... Well, not a, not a lot of stuff has happened in Heart of the Swarm to change it around, I feel like. I mean, it may happen, but it's still mostly Marine Marauder against Celid Archon with some Colossus mixed in for good measure and a couple of Stalkers. And... That hasn't changed a lot. Um, so, we're seeing something pretty standard here. Uh, we're seeing the gateway, uh, although I think he's forgotten his gas. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's forgotten the gas. And down here we're seeing sort of the typical Terran wall off. That's, you know, generally a pretty good idea. Um, but in this matchup, it's started to become a little bit riskier lately. Uh, and he's getting the early gas. So we're going to see some kind of one base checking at least a little bit, maybe some Reapers, that kind of stuff. But again, this is a pretty low-level game, uh, as you can tell by the Cybernetic Core and no gas. Um, so yeah, he's going to have a lot of minerals and not a lot of money to use the Cyber Core. So that's going to be interesting. And down here we're going to have some gas, and it's going to be interesting to see what kind of plays he's going to make. I mean, generally in this matchup, uh, the one barracks expand and the one gateway uh, expand is sort of the the norm. I'm well, finally getting the gas there. Um, but you're not really going to see the norm from these players, because they I don't think they've really ever played this matchup before. Uh, as, as these races, anyway. Um, I think Nuda usually plays Protoss, occasionally dabbles in Surg. I don't think he ever plays... Terran very much, and Chris, well, he doesn't play Protoss and hasn't for a while. He's normally a Surg player, mainly. So what we're seeing here is basically three racks, which would make you think, against the Forgate, actually, which would make you think we're going to see some serious aggression in a moment. Um, I think I'm going to spoil it, because I actually observed this game originally, and I can tell you that that does not happen. Now, there's something odd about this. Like, number one is, getting the gas usually means that you're going to get a factory. Because otherwise you can't really spend it. Or at the very least, you're going to get some add-ons for these barracks. I mean, <laughs> this SCV right here uh, got one of the weirdest commands ever to build one barracks and then a barracks afterwards, which actually cost you the minerals for both barracks, if you don't know. So that's a fail. Don't do that. Um, and the early scout. Now, I don't think neither player has scouted the other player yet, so that's actually the first scouting uh, ever. Which is rather odd, because it doesn't seem like Nuda is at all worried. Like, he gets the tech lab finally, but he's not building marines. I mean, in this position, he should really be kind of worried. I mean, he's seeing four gateways, though um, the warp gate should be up, but he's really, he's seeing the four gateways, and the random forge. Um, <laughs> the very random forge. See, this is sort of what I like to call overtaking on one base. I mean, basically, Chris is playing as if he was playing against a Protoss player. Uh, actually, not even, because the forge wouldn't really make a lot of sense. He's playing against no race. Sort of a made-up race that's... Yeah. And then Nuli is getting... He's getting, like, a Reaper. And then... Two tech labs, and look at it. Like, his gas should be higher. I don't know. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, he queued up a lot of Reapers. <laughs> That's venture gas. Um, and then 
This is the funniest thing. I, I think that when I first saw this replay, I couldn't help but, like, I was about to die. Seeing him not build anything and then kill a billion units and then build only marines out of two tech left <laughs> barracks without getting stim or combat shield is the dumbest thing I think I have pretty much ever seen. It's incredibly stupid. Now, um, Chris is also playing the game. I think it's the best thing I can say. I mean, at the very least, his Mothership Core is pretty well placed. And thanks to these um, get rays, he has enough defense against these three racks and the super late Reapers. Um, just a note, um, the Reaper is a pretty shitty unit in terms of just straight up fighting. It's great for getting a lot of scouting done and being uh, and harassing in the early game, but when you're getting to about 8 minutes, they're kinda useless. I mean, the old Reapers you could sort of use because they were very effective against uh, light units. So they had a they had a clear purpose. Um, well, for pylon. Um, so yeah, there was a reason to get them. Not seeing anything new here with the scan. Now there really isn't a reason to get them. Uh, it doesn't make sense. There really is no reason to get them in the late game. Uh, they don't serve any purpose that I know of. Uh, I'm not an expert. I'm not day nine, but uh, I think I, I think I can claim at the very least that these things don't serve a purpose uh, right now. On the plus side, uh, Nuda is getting bunkers and being horribly supply blocked, <laughs> and uh, he's filling them up with marines. It's always good to get some extra bunkers because um, they don't cost a lot. You get most of the money back anyway, so at this point, it's a good investment, especially if your opponent's going to be aggressive. Which, you would have guessed, Chris would have been, like, I don't know, five minutes ago, I suppose, but he didn't choose to do that. So, um, so yeah, we're basically just seeing um, two players being noobs, I think is the, the best, most descriptive term I can come up with. So Chris is adding on more gateways. Again, gateways are great for Protoss. You can use them as sort of defensive tools if you like to. Um, so just leaving them idle is the best defense you have as Protoss. Um, I don't think... I think he's throwing the... Um, yeah, there he goes, Twilight Council. So, can you see the little gap here? Right there and there, between the pylon and the buildings? Um, it, it's going to get a little bit funny with that robo later. I'm just going to spoil it. Um, so yeah, um, Nuli hasn't been keeping up on his probes. Oh, uh, no. Oh. Well, his SCVs, but then neither player has. They're about, yeah, 40 to 36 is not a lot at this point. I mean, it's pretty normal to be about uh, maxing out your your SCV count, your probe count about this time, sort of the, the 75 kind of thing. Um, you kind of want to have up with, with some Chrono Boost, you can get pretty far. Actually, at about 7 minutes, you can pretty easily get to a comfortable 50. Uh, seven to eight minutes thereabouts, if you are good about the Corona boosting, but that also means you can't Corona boost other things. Um, so yeah, I mean, Nula's really uh, very worried, it seems. I mean, he really wants to make a really a thick wall. Um, he's going to go for some Terran building armor. I know. The Terran building armor. Um, you, I think, I think it got I think people start getting it a little bit uh, in the later stages of Wings of Liberty. And people started getting a lot of Ravens. Uh, as it turns out, this actually helps the Raven turrets. Oh, there we go. Look, he actually scanned the Observer. He saw it. Pretty cool. So yeah, uh, Chris is doing a pretty good job of scouting now. He's building uh, quite a few Observers. I think they would be better placed about here, maybe uh, over here and like around the map so that he would see if he was getting attacked instead of just like going straight to the opponent's base. You don't really need several of them for that purpose. But, I mean, on the plus side, compare his vision, right? He has pretty decent vision over his opponent. He can sort of see what's going on with the two observers observing the same thing. And Nuru has basically no vision. He doesn't even know his opponent has an expansion. He doesn't know if his opponent has six expansions. And he's rolling himself in and not going and not attacking. So, I don't know. So, yeah, Warp Prism and double upgrade. So, Chris is getting aggressive here. He's getting the charge, which definitely means that when you're getting charged into a blink, that 
means, in most cases, that you're going to go for straight up engagement. Because that's where it's good. Blink is really good at defense, it's good against sort of fighting against a lot of drops and that kind of stuff, but Chris doesn't seem worried, which I, um, either it's lack of knowledge, oh, found the power, um, either it's lack of knowledge or it's just knowing his opponent. I mean, Chris is really good at metagaming his opponent, he does it a lot, um, because he's very used to playing against the same two or three players, so he knows what their, uh, their weaknesses are, and he's going for a third, which is very smart. Um, and moving out here, um, and the Reapers are on the high ground, No, This is pretty funny. No, you could have just retreated! Oh man. <laughs> the bounce party. So yeah, look how worried he is, he's even getting the sensor tower. Not to spot for warp prisms or any harassment, just at the front lines. That's what he wants to see. Is there an army coming to kill me? Oh, those... Oh, poor solids. No! Sucks to be a solid. Self-healing reapers, man. OP. Anywho, and he's even getting siege tanks. So, yeah, look. War prism. So, yeah. Um, this is probably where you... Uh, this is the kind of stuff I, I kind of like about Chris. He's he's good to get about getting aggressive, although... I, <laughs> I can't believe he just blew the... I, I already saw this once, but it's so funny seeing him fly the warp prism over these bunkers. Oh man, that is dumb. <laughs> it's just incredibly dumb. Like, why would you fly it over here? It just makes no sense whatsoever. Like, have all these marines positioned down here. Like, like go up. Like, you even have these observers. They can see stuff. Man. Well, anyway, the uh, Reapers are getting away. Some of them. Uh, and thanks to this warp prism, he, can, he could see the high ground. And uh, now they can go and be really dangerous to this expansion that he's not using. So that's great. Awesome. Um, yeah. So Chris has a bit of an upgrade advantage at this point. Uh, I think, yeah, Nude is at 1-1. One, one. He's about to be at 3-3 three, three upgrades. And since this matchup is very... Um, very much, de not determined, but it's a matchup where the upgrades mean a lot. Uh, it pretty much, you know, in a lot of situations, the upgrades are what determines how cost-effective you're going to be. Because generally, what you always see, you see a lot of cells from the protest player, you know, a lot of marines and marauders from the Terran player, and generally when you see them clash, what happens is the guy with a lot of upgrades, well, he has an upper hand. Uh, micro and stuff like that can actually can help a lot, and, you know, goes micro, and Yippies and whatever, but generally the um, the upgrades do make a lot of uh, difference. Wow. I mean, guys, if you don't know, and you quite possibly don't, there's an upgrade for the bunker. That Blizzard has chosen not to remove. It increases the bunker capacity, and it also makes the bunkers look really fancy. This is terrible siege tank positioning, by the way. Uh, and also, he is building widow mines out of tech lab factories. <laughs> it's just incredibly stupid. <laughs> I, mean, I know he only has tech lab factories, but it just makes me laugh. He's just sort of I, he's finally making marauders. I don't know if he yeah, th these are the first marauders he's made, and so far he's made pretty much all his marines out of these two barracks. And he has yet to get either stim pack or combat shields or anything with these tech labs. So they have finally served a purpose. Twenty minutes into the game. So anyway, now um, Chris is getting really worried. No, not Chris. Nula is getting really worried about this army because he can see it thanks to the sensor tower. And Chris wants to show it, which makes sense. Think about it. This army. Eh, I mean, it could probably go in and destroy this. Bunker upgrades! They're awesome! Get those bunker upgrades, kids. They will make you something. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. And I'm not gonna try. Um, and yeah, two starports. Neither of them with anything on them. Making one medevac. Yeah. 
So I think this is about the point where uh, Nuli starts to um, try to kill these observers in the in a unique way by being totally crappy at it. Although in his defense, it is incredibly difficult to see these things. Look, they are barely even there. You can't tell they're there. Like you can just barely tell right here, and I don't think. Yeah, there we go. Now they scanned them. You can tell, but it's really difficult to see these things um, unless you scan them. Yeah, it actually did work. Go Nula. And he has missile turrets strategically placed to take out observers. So, you know, he doesn't want people to see, even though Chris has been seeing his entire base for the last, like, 12 minutes. So, yeah, now Chris is making immortals, because immortals are good at breaking siege lines. Which is true. Um, but not so good when you're stuck in here. <laughs> I told you this game was dumb, didn't I? Look, look right there. He's rallying them down here, right? Man... <laughs> oh, it sucks to be an immortal when you're stuck, right? I will live forever in this place and never do anything. I can stare at pylons all day. So yeah, Nuli's making a, a pretty good decision here. He's just, like, double ninja expanding because he can't get out and he's building a bunch of Widow Mines uh, against Chris because, you know, Widow Mines are good and they're really good, really good against Protoss, because generally what happens is that your Observer flies in, and it uh, sees all the Widow Mines, and then some of the Widow Mines go off on your solids, and your Widow, and your uh, Observers die. And then tons of your stuff dies to the Widow Mines. On top of that, you have this terrible Siege Tank line. Absolutely awful. Terrible placement. Uh, and a lot of uh, sort of a decent amount of Marine Rotter, and finally some medevacs moving down here to actually help them out. So you have something decent here. Uh, I think what Chris's plan is here is basically just containing his opponent. He has, not, he has no idea about these uh, expansions, these ninja expansions. Um, and also, this is a planetary. I mean, Nuri is probably the most worried person in the world. Because Getting a planetary at your natural when you have a billion widow lines here and siege tank line that again horrible and bunker upgrades and even building upgrades. And that's straight up awful. Well, this is about the time where I get really bored watching this game. So I basically tell Chris, Go attack, dude, you can win right now. Which is kinda true, I suppose. I mean I was kinda just waiting to see this. All that death. But it actually it went pretty well for him, which annoyed me, I have to say, because of this terrible siege chain line. Look, that's a terrible siege chain line. Um, yeah, he did, I mean, he did decently well, especially because, like, a lot of these marines are just, like, dancing in the background. La cucaracha, la cucaracha, na 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 na. Well, so yeah, Nuno's having some trouble here, and he's building Thors, which is just awful. <laughs> I mean, it's just a terrible idea. Bad life choices all around. Also, still not building an observer. That's a brave marauder. A dead brave marauder, but brave marauder. And now he picked the planetary fortress. Look how great a decision that was. Look, it destroyed an immortal. Oh, that looked awesome. Well, anyway, so Chris is just going to keep attacking the front lines and not destroying these widow mines. So yeah, the widow mines are and he keeps reinforcing up here. So you know what's going to happen, right? He's going to run past these stupid fucking <laughs> widow mines again and again, and all his reinforcements are going to die. And he's just going to deal with it. Um, the funniest thing is, um, he actually gets a warp prism at one point. Because, uh, yeah, he, he frees the stock marauders with a warp prism, and he decides not to use it. Oh yeah, that's right, it's right here. So instead of warping in with the warp prism in the base, he's warping in over here and sending them all to die, look. And they're ready! For ire! That was awesome. Oh no, not the sensor tower! Look. Right there. You can warp in right there. You don't even have to get an observer. Which... He hasn't? Oh, he does have two. Oh, he did build some. Cool. Anyway, missed it. There you go. I'm bad at this game. <laughs> it comes the best part. We're just gonna hang out here, because this place is not dangerous. 
No! How could we have known? And finally, he kills the... <laughs> I can't think that's so funny that he still get a kill. <sighs> Ghost stalkers. So he finally kills the threat. And now he's ready. And this game is totally over, right? Oh yeah, this is the point where Nulu, he uh, realizes that, Man, this is the new thing for the Thors! Um, not realizing that that's only for air units. And then there goes a other observer. Um, so yeah, actually, Nulu wins this. Losing his expansion, sure, but it's kind of mined out at this point. You know, I mean, these mineral patches don't have all that much money left on them, so it's fine. And I really hope he doesn't run these... Oh yeah, the widow mines are gone. <laughs> oh man, that was funny. Well, anyway... So Nulu basically, um, he just produces everything he can produce. Huh, stuck, Thor. <laughs> the stuck fucking thing for this game. Oh, yeah, he's building, um, he's building Vikings, because that's really all he can do. And, uh, and just trying to hold off these attacks from Chris. Actually, they're surprisingly even in the, uh, in the supply count. And, uh, yeah, Chris starts to transition into an air toss build with Tempest. Because Tempest are awesome, man! And gets up his fourth base. Um, no, nah, I don't think he gets any upgrades, really. Uh, no, not now, at least. And he has some probes up there doing nothing. And yeah, so, Nula just decides to move out. Because as it turns out, Stalkers are pretty shit against Thors, man. And Marauders. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. But, uh, yeah, there's there are a lot of gateways. Um, the structure's tab is T. It is the T button. So yeah, he has, a uh, 12 warp gates. So that's a decent amount of warp gates. I mean, it's okay. It, it works out. It's pretty good. Um, so yeah, at this point, uh, once again bringing a warp prism for no reason. To stare at stuff and not use. Uh, yeah, and he's basically destroying the space. So you'd think, right? That's it. Right, I mean, Lula has the GG at this point. Right? He's pretty much dead. He cannot fight his opponent. He should be a good man and GG, especially because he can't build enough Vikings to destroy these things. But that's not really Nula's game, right? He's a little bit too awesome to GG when he's clearly lost. So he tends to do something else. Keep playing. Because, look, I mean, he has plenty of money. He could just, like, all day, build, like, all fucking day, right? Like, he's ready. He'd take on this amount of stalkers, no problem. I mean, all he needs is to build, like, I don't know, a barracks, right? Or get this one Thor out to fight, which <laughs> ironically gets a kill. Um, two kills? Wow, that's awesome. Stuck and getting two kills. That's pretty great. So there it goes. But yeah, the, um, yeah, he's pretty much dead. He's dead, and he doesn't have a lot of money, and he should GG. But no, man. He, um, he, I mean, he should have done this uh, quite a bit earlier, because, you know, now they're going to die. This is going to start to burn in a moment. There you go. Uh, at which point, these Tempests should have been shooting the other uh, factory, because this one's going to die anyway. It's pretty funny that he's following it around with the war prism. But not anymore, because it's... <laughs> oh yeah, he made an, he probably made an attack move with the war prism. <laughs> oh, he tried to attack with the war prism. Oh man. <laughs> That's really funny. Oh man, this is a really dumb game. So yeah, um, what do you do at this point if you're Lulu, right? I mean, you have a factory floating out here, you have this hidden base with nine workers, and you have this hidden base with 13 workers, and your opponent is building carriers! I mean, a lot of carriers. Not extra stargates, because that's so we're doing it. No, we're just gonna queue up four carriers, because that's... That's what we do, man! We queue, and then we core boost. It's called being Protoss. Also, um, this is pretty funny. Like, all the stalkers, I'm, I'm getting there, man, I'm firing, I'm firing, well, I have to run around. It's kind of funny. But yeah, he uh, finally gets it down. And now, see, because what Nuna needs right now is to get unsupply blocked. Because if he gets unsupply blocked, 
you'll be able to make units from all of these structures. I'll just let that sink in for a moment. He was building 11 supply depots. The funniest thing is he's walling this in to defend himself while leaving this totally open. <laughs> like, his opponent is up here, right? What is the most likely place he's going to move in on this expansion? Here. And also, yeah. So that's just going to happen, right? So yeah, this uh, probe is going to... I think he's going to start trying to cannon rush this expansion while all his stalkers are standing here doing nothing because it's kind of more fun. So yeah, here's the ironic part, right? Chris realizes that Nuda is kind of a dick, so he probably has another expansion, right? <laughs> this is... <laughs> Why would you do this? I get over, man. It's over, man. Just go mine, for Christ's sake. I mean, just whatever, man. It's over. You can't pick up some of the series at least. I, why would you stop this cannon rush? Just let him spend money on this stupid cannon rush. So yeah, these two stalkers go down here, and they actually find the expansion, which is super stupid, because it's, it's walled in with several supply depots and this one lowered supply depot, which is kind of funny. And now he's getting chased by all... Oh, yeah. He, yeah, good. I mean, now the wall end is perfect. <laughs> Look. That is so funny. He actually gets away from all these. Not with, it, not with the blink. Just normal micro. Oh, my God! There was an open side right here. Build supply depots! Now, you'll find that supply depots in this game are a curious counter to a very well-known Protoss unit. I know. I know. It sounds crazy, right? I'm a crazy person. Now, you just wait. It'll happen. Now, he let all these cannons finish, because... Who cares, right? I mean, that's just... You, why not? He won't expand here, man. Or here. So, yeah. He has a stalker here, and one here... That, why is this warp prism is just the dumbest warp prism in the world? Anyway... So the Tempest are destroying this supply depot incredibly slowly, but no, this is not the one. Look at these carriers. This is how terrible carriers are. Look at how shitty they are. The Stalker is basically killing this faster than the goddamn carrier is. Look at how shitty carriers are the upgrades. They do 5 damage. This stupid supply depot with 3 armor makes this thing do 2 damage every shot. I mean, yeah, carriers, in theory, do 80 damage, but not in actual fact, because anything that has any kind of fucking armor just negates that entire thing. Even a goddamn supply depot. That's how crappy carriers are. They are the shittiest unit, I think, in the entire, in the entire game. They cost so much money, and they are just the most useless thing ever. Cannons, on the other hand, are the most OP unit, which is why... Chris is currently cannon rushing this the supply depots, not realizing that he can't see them. Because they're up a ramp. See? So OP, man. So what he does is not take any chances, right? Just one stalker. Cause what if the supply depot started firing and he lost all his stalkers? So you send one up, right? Only one on each side. Look, even the fucking cannons do a bat faster at destroying these things. I mean, come on. Like, carriers are so shitty. Like, cannons kill these things faster than carriers do. I mean, come on. Look at how crappy these things are. Look. Oh my god, this barracks is dying. You are the worst unit ever. You. You, carrier. Disciple carrier, right there. My name is Brian, and you suck. Look, they're all firing at this barracks, and it's not even dying all that quickly. I mean, think about how much money is here! So much money, and this is basically better! Because it's faster and not totally shitty. Oh my god. So yeah, he is yet to GG. It's another thing. Because, look. He still has a chance to win this. There is still a chance to win this! Look, serious supply, guys. Like, you don't need to, like, act like you've 
boss just because you have zero out of zero supply. I mean, it's just like the man bringing you down, right? Because you have these shitty fucking carriers. Actually, at this point, I actually asked Chris to send one of his carriers over to see if he could actually defeat this missile turret because it has the <laughs> it has the it has the range upgrade. <laughs> I wanted to see whether Lodi could actually win this fight, which. Actually, I don't think it could. I'm, I'm not even sure the unupgraded carrier, or almost unupgraded carrier, has one shield. Look. Oh, wait, where is it? Oh, yeah, you hit them over here because they're so shameful. Um, yeah, they have plus one armor to their fucking shields. So, that's great. Oh, well, they actually start with two armor. Good for them. We. Um, and he finally got an upgrade, so now they do six damage with every hit. So, they only do partially shit damage to everything. So, yeah, now he's going to do the only... Smart thing, which is find the counter to missile turrets. So we figured out that the counter to carriers is supply depots, and the counter to missile turrets, probes. Look, can't do anything. Boom. Now that's how you win. Awesome, right? Totally awesome. <laughs> I mean, this entire game is so dumb. But at the very least, level 2 air upgrades on the way. Actually, the reason I'm... This is my own replay, and the reason why I didn't stop it until now, uh, it, I haven't yet, is because I was actually basically dying of laughter because this game is so dumb. <laughs> the, I, I kind of want to go back if I could remember what it was. I think I, I think it was about 20 minute mark when he flew. No, actually, before that, I don't actually quite remember, but let's see if we can find that dumb ass drop he made with the warp prism that died over here. Um, there we go, there's the warp prism. Let's see. I should follow you. There we go, okay. So he warps in. He's on the attack. Go, go stalkers! Go stalkers! Marines are doing nothing. Oh, we're finally attacking! And half of, oh, actually half of them are not dan dancing in the background. It's awesome. Now half of them are dancing in the background. No! Fly away! Fly away! Yeah! Death. Is that not the best use of a warp prism ever? At least compared to the other uses of warp prism. Like the warp prism saving the immortals stuck between the stupid pile on. Oh my god. Man, is this game dumb. <laughs> and the worst. Let's see the worst siege tank line again. I just want to, I want to revisit this. Oh my god, he's carefully positioning them. Sort of. I mean, these guys are in strike. It's like, this is Greece and Cyprus. You're Greece and Cyprus. And you are Germany and, I don't know, France. We'll be out here on the edge so everybody can kill us from down below or right here. Instead of like, I don't know, being here because we have massive range. Look, we can't even use it. We can't see this far! Well, anyway, I think I should stop um, laughing at the stupid game. So yeah, our next power. This was Chris Powers versus Nulidico in the possibly one of the dumbest matches I've ever seen. Uh, and thank you.